and welcome to the underbelly of my 19th century home, uh, which creates for me a never-ending list of uh, projects. Uh, it's not a money pit. I love this place. Um, but when you live in a home that was built in 1874, plus or minus maybe five years, we're not really sure, um, there's always something to do. So the, the project for this weekend is to add thermostat controls to five of the seven heating zones that I have in the house. Uh, this house is heated with uh, hot water baseboard heating uh, controlled by this boiler. And um, if you have a system like this, you are very familiar and you probably do if you're watching this video, unless you're my mother or one of my other family members who is watching this just to be <laughs> polite. But um, if you have this one of these systems, you are very familiar with um, the never-ending fiddling of the valves that you uh, that you have to do to maintain constant temperature in, in your in your room. So, like for me right now, I've got these three valves are wide open, 100%. I've got this one just barely cracked at uh, I think what, 10 degrees, we're at like 45 degrees on this one, 30 degrees on this valve. Um, and the temperature outside, you know, it's, uh, it's high 20s, low 30s, but if it gets any colder or any hotter, I'm going to have to come back down here and readjust all the valves to get the rooms balanced again. And uh, quite frankly, I'm just getting tired of doing that. So uh, we're going to add thermostat controls to five of my seven zones. Um, I'm not doing all seven. One of these zones is, it's just on all the time and it's still too cold in that area. So it doesn't make any sense to put a thermostat there. And then my other zone is for a uh, dining room addition we put on. And that has um, a heat in the floor that's uh, controlled by this system over here. And it's got a mixing valve, um, and I can I can control the temperature through that circuit uh, independently. So it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put a thermostat there. Plus, that room is wide open to two other rooms that I'm controlling with thermostats already. So, you know, again, just be kind of overkill. So I'm only doing five of the seven zones, but hopefully once we're done, um, it is going to make my life a little bit easier and save me uh, a lot of trips uh, down here uh, into the dungeon. So let's, um, let's head upstairs and look at the components that I'm going to use uh, to make this happen. Okay, so these are my components. Um, for the most part, I got a few that are still arriving by mail today uh, and hopefully no later than tomorrow. But um, this is the nuts and bolts of it. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a hybrid system. I'm going to have three smart thermostats down on the lower level. Um, I've got no issues running you know, wire from my, you know, my lower level here down into the basement. So um, I'm just going to run everything through the contacts of the smart thermostats. But for the upstairs, I don't want to, I don't want to run wire from upstairs down into uh, the basement. I've got no desire to do that. So, um, Fortunately, I was able to find this unit on Amazon. It was like 25 bucks, and it is a thermostat, battery-operated, battery uh, can mount to the wall, but it also becomes detached, acts like a remote control. You can put it by your bed or wherever you want to control the heat. And it controls wirelessly this plug, and it's got great range. Um, I've had no issues with uh, this being upstairs, talking to uh, the plugs, this plug down, down in the basement. So. I'm going to have two of these upstairs controlling those two zones, three of these controlling the three zones uh, downstairs. Uh, so how's it going to work? So each, um, each thermostat is going to control its own uh, relay. So the ones that are uh, going to be the smart thermostats, that's going to be 24 volt AC control wire going through the contacts on the thermostat controlling uh, each is going to control a, a relay. And then um, the wireless thermostats, because it's a 110 volt plug, that's those two relays are 110 volts. But every thermostat is going to control its own relay. One side of the, uh, one set of contacts on the relay, I'm going to send the control wire from the boiler in parallel through one set of contacts on each, uh, on each relay. So if any relay is energized, it will send that signal back to the boiler 
and the, uh, the pump will turn on. On the other set of contacts that's on each relay, um, I'm going to control um, the, their respective valve. These, uh, these valves are uh, motorized valves. They're normally closed, spring return. Uh, uh, Honeywell makes these. I've had one uh, in my system for about two years now, and it works great. I've had no issues, so I decided just to, to stick with these. Um, one thing I would say, if you're looking, um, you know, when you choose a valve, make sure it's rated to stay on for hours at a time. I, uh, when I was putting this project together, I tried to cheap out and I bought uh, one of these valves off Amazon. It was like $15 and I plugged it in for about a half hour and it got so hot I couldn't even touch it. Um, I was definitely not comfortable putting that uh, in my system. Um, so I would just say, you know, when you choose a valve, just make sure it can stay on uh, for hours at a time. So I'm using these Honeywell valves. I will put the part number um, and every, part numbers for everything will be in the, in the notes if you want to use my components. Um, and yeah, so each one will be uh, energized by the other set of contacts in the relay. Um, I'm going to have a 24 volt transformer in the box that's going to supply power um, to these and then to connect them into the system I'm going to these are uh, these are sweat connections I'm going to sweat in um, maybe I don't know three four inches of uh, three quarter inch copper uh, pipe into the ends of each uh, each valve and I'm going to connect it into the system using these shark bite style connectors um, I got these off supplyhouse.com I want to say they were like Three three fifty a piece, and you know, I want to be able to service or replace these valves if I need to. So I'm going to use these. They're rated for up to two hundred degrees. The water in my boiler comes out, you know, maybe at two twenty, two thirty. But every this will all be on the return side of things. So by the time the, the water goes through the system and gets down to the valve, it'll be you know under the under two hundred degrees, and um, I'm not worried about using these in the system. So. That is how I'm going to connect them into my um, into my piping, and I guess the only other thing I would say um, is you probably know if you notice there's actually two sets of leads coming out of these valves. One is to control the motor that opens up the valve, but then the other one is basically a, a switch that energizes when the valve is open. I could use that switch instead of the um, instead of the relays to send the signal back to the boiler to turn to turn the pump on and I would say if if I had a valve at in every zone um, in my system that would probably be the right thing to do because if, if, if all your zone if, if every loop has a valve and uh, these are spring return closed so if all my valves are closed, and let's say I have a valve that fails, and um, I send, you know, I tell this thing to open and it doesn't open, but I also tell my uh, boiler to start pumping water through the system, you know, it's going to be pumping water into a system that there's, you know, everything's closed. And uh, I think that's probably not good for the system. It's probably not good for the pump. And that's why they, they have that set of contacts, which basically guarantees you won't turn the pump on unless what this valve is opened. Now for my system, um, I'm going to have two zones that um, don't have the valves. So I'm really not at risk of ever having that happen. So I'm comfortable sending everything through the relays. From a troubleshooting standpoint, you know, for me, you know, I, I kind of like having things go through the relays. So if I ever have an issue, I can just look at the relays and see if they're being energized, it'd be a little more, a little more difficult, in my opinion, to troubleshoot if I was using the, um, the switches that are in the valves. However, like I said, if you have a system where all of these could be closed and you could shut down, you know, shut off the whole system, then I think that would be the right thing to do. So, um, anyway, I think that's uh, that's it by way of explanation, and uh, so I think we're just ready to start putting things together. So a fun fact is I've hit my head on this pipe at least a half a dozen times since I started this video. 
Uh, my commitment to you, the viewers, if I ever catch that on film, I will leave it in for comic relief. Um, so what I've got here is one of the five valves that I've put into the system. Um, like I said I was going to do, I did sweat in a piece of copper pipe at each end of each valve. Uh, that allowed me to use the shark bite style connectors and if you do go that route you want to make sure that this piece is long enough so that you can fit your removal tool in if you ever do need to pull one from the system. Speaking of that, um, I did put a shutoff valve at the inlet side of each valve in case I ever do need to pull one out uh, I don't drain all my uh, water all over the floor. And the last thing I did was I took the leads that I'm not using for the end of travel switches. I tucked those back into each box and then just took the leads for the, the, uh, the valve itself, ran those into a junction box. Everything comes back down to my control box. And what we're going to do next is I'm going to just briefly go over how I wired all my components together in the box. And then we're going to come back down here, fire things up, and see if it works. Okay, so here's the circuit. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I've got 120 volts coming into the box, and it is going to be energizing uh, both of these plugs as well as this transformer. I've got these plugs tied together, and I've got the transformer also tied into the uh, plug circuit. So 120 volts is energizing both plugs and the transformer. These are my wireless uh, switches that um, are controlling the two zones upstairs. And when either one of these is energized, it will be energizing these uh, 110 volt uh, coils. On the 24 volt side, I've got um, one leg of my 24 volt from the 24 volt transformer coming into one side of the coil, each coil. I've got these three relays um, one side jumper together. So I'm feeding one leg into one side of this coil and this relay and then I've jumpered it over to the other two. The other side of the 24 volts, I'm doing a couple things. I'm tying it into this set of contacts. So I'll call these contacts number one, contacts, um, and these are the contacts that will be controlling my, my valves. But I also have this wire tied into that contact so I'm basically sending this leg from the 24 volts through this wire. It's going to be tied into the three, uh, the three thermostats that I have downstairs that are my wired thermostats. So this is going to be uh, wire nutted into um, the three uh, contacts going up to the thermostats. They're going to come back down and each wire will be tied in to its respective relay. So... Um, that's how they're going to energize. These relays will be energized by those thermostats. So when the relays are energized, uh, two things are going to happen. Uh, these are double um, pole relays. So I've got two set of contacts on each one. They'll both get closed. And on one side, one set of contacts, like I said, would be the for the valves. And what I'm doing here is I'm sending the one leg of the 24 volts through this set of contacts and what I'm going to, once I'm tied into my box, all of my wires that are coming back from my, my valves, I'm going to be tying one leg into each one of these relays on the contacts, uh, for the contacts number one on that side. And then for the uh, um, other side of those, uh, those valves, those switches for those valves, they're all going to be wire nutted into to this wire, which is tied into the other side of the 24 volts. So that is how those valves will be energized by their respective uh, relays. And then for the other set of contacts on the relays, those are going to be used to basically tell my boiler pump to turn on. So I've got my, my control wire is going to... Um, is going to come in to the uh, to the box. It's going to be tied into this um, terminal right here. I've got this. This is for contact number two. I've got that terminal 
jumper to every all five relays on the same side and then when that is closed that signal is going to come out of of that side and I've got all of those wires that are going to be tied in together. I'm going to be wire nutted. Um, these are going to be wire nutted together along with the return side of the uh, control signal that goes to my boiler. So if any one of these uh, relays is energized and closes, um, any one of those can turn on the boiler. Um, and I think that's it. So. You know, tried to make it as clear as I could, but uh, basically, uh, once we get this wired in, and you and uh, and you take a, you can see how it's all wired into the, the system. Hopefully, it'll be more clear. But uh, that's the circuit. It's uh, pretty straightforward. And uh, let's go wire it in and uh, see if it works. Okay, uh, here it is. I'll uh, I'll wire it in, power it up, and actually, believe it or not, it's actually working. So. Um, Real pleased with how this turned out. I uh, brought in my uh, 110 volts in uh, to power the uh, two wireless relays in my transformer. I've got two of my wires from my valves coming down this side. Uh, these are being powered by the wireless uh, thermostats. And then I've got the other three coming down the middle. Uh, they're being powered you know, by the uh, smart thermostats using these relays. And I've got my thermostat wires coming in down that side. Everything's wired in, and like I said, it's, it's working great. Um, one thing I do want to show you is just the, uh, you know, these wireless therm uh, thermostats, uh, how, they, how well they work. Um, I've got one upstairs on the second floor. That's calling for heat right now. And then I brought the other one down here uh, just to show you um, how it works. So I just, I just bumped up the temperature and, uh, and that kicked on. So yeah, everything's working like I wanted it to. Um, Imagine that. Um, so anyway, um, like I've, I said at the beginning, or there was a disclaimer at the beginning, um, I'm not an electrician, I'm not a plumber, I'm just a guy with a uh, internet connection, an old house, and a limited budget. So I've got to do some of this stuff myself. But um, you know, please only do uh, what you're comfortable with. Do your own research, and hopefully, if this, you know, when this video is up for a while, you know, look, check out the comments. Some people who maybe know what they're doing might actually offer some helpful uh, suggestions as well and, and uh, we can all learn something. So I guess that's it. Um, I will see you guys next time. I've got something to do around here and a little bit of time to, uh, to shoot a video. Take care.